Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from the True Off My Chest subreddit. From no cockroach 3567 who says, My husband has been lying to me about our finances, and we are messed up. The title is basically the story. I am also to blame for this, I realize that. We divided household responsibilities pretty evenly, but we don't split every responsibility down the middle. And finances were his job. He's better at them. I thought he was better at them. We are 50k in credit card debt. I did not know about this. 50k on a home equity loan. I did know about this. Two months behind on our mortgage and severely behind on a car payment. I quit my job when we decided to have my middle child three years ago. Then we had our youngest a year ago. I thought we were fine. We should have been fine. I don't understand what the F happened or why he waited so long to tell me. I trusted him completely. I would never have believed this. I love him so much. By all accounts, we had an ideal marriage or we did. I thought we did. I have no idea how we will ever come back from this. It will take years to pay this off. I'm in school full time, but we'll need to drop out because we can obviously no longer afford childcare while I'm in class. That just sets us back even more because my earning potential is lower. The most effed up part is that my dad did this exact same thing to my mum. It was awful to live through as a teenager. I was a serious contributor in being resistant to commitment or ever relying on anyone for anything. My husband obviously knew about this. It was my number one reservation when I was quitting my job. I can't believe I was so stupid. This is my worst fear coming true and I have no idea what to do. Edit. I don't even know why everyone is making that my kids are in daycare full time, but they are not. I pay a babysitter while I take one class on campus. Our oldest is in public school and our younger two are home with me. I'm going to community college and 75% of my classes are online. The rest are at night. There is no daycare bill. It's literally $300 a month expense and it should have worked. Edit. We're not living large here. I cook everything from scratch. We don't get takeout. I cloth diaper. I buy the kids clothes secondhand or get hand-me-downs. Our cars aren't new. Our mortgage is very reasonable. We cut all the extras when I stopped working because my job would hardly have paid for daycare. There is no reason his income should not have been enough. I don't know what he spent money on, but it clearly wasn't our bills. Edit again. My husband makes 140k a year. I was making 30k a year. We had no credit card debt when I quit my job. Our mortgage and home equity load combined are $2,000 a month. Our car payments combined are $500 a month. I know Reddit thinks women asexually produce children and then force men to support them, but my husband enthusiastically wanted children as well and had an equal role in creating them. My salary would not have justified the cost of daycare. We both did the numbers 100 different ways and it should have worked. It should still be working. I don't know what the F he's spending money on or if it's even the extent of the issue, but I didn't just frivolously spend money like an effing idiot. I bust my ass to keep our expenses low. The plan was that I would finish school and start working again by the time middle was in kindergarten, so we would have had only one child in daycare. It was a good plan. It would have worked. I don't know what happened and I'm terrified to find out. And I guess the big question after all that is, what is the money being spent on? We could go down the usual Reddit suspects, which could be, you know, drug addiction, could be gambling, possibly cheating. And I could speculate all day on that. But the village says you need to figure out where the money went. It could be living beyond your means or it could be hookers and drugs. Seriously, this happened to a good friend of my wife. The solution looks very different depending on the problem that you've got here. You must understand the problem for yourself before you agree to any solutions. Seriously, don't take his word for it. Check the numbers and the math. Specialist Holiday says, regardless, he is doing one of two things. You guys have a lifestyle his job can't afford and he used a credit card to make up the difference. Or he is purchasing stupid crap and has a gambling problem. Either way, you always need to be involved in the finances. Always. Autumn Pixie says, the biggest thing I'd want to know is how he got there in the first place. I feel that would make or break it for me. 50k in credit card debt on what? Did he overestimate cost of living and his job doesn't cover the bills? Did he take it out and gamble? Did he spend it on frivolous things? 
All of that information is crucial. Scanliv says it's very interesting to see people assume it's all her fault. Well, you quit your job, or you have three kids, or you Grubhub. You didn't talk to your husband. Your husband doesn't feel comfortable talking to you. Basically putting the blame on OP for something she had no idea was going on until it got so out of hand. Her husband knowingly hid 50k in credit card debt and chose not to tell her. By the sounds of it, they live frugally. She pays 300 a month on childcare, she cooks from home, the mortgage is reasonable, and the cars are cheap. Something is wrong. Something is going on that OP doesn't have any idea about, but it's her fault. Lest you all forget, they agreed to split responsibility and her husband took on finances, which he was supposed to be better at, which he is not. OP, take a deep dive into your finances. Use a fine-tooth comb. Something is up. And HP Stuff says the comments are ridiculous. She's going to community college and paying a nanny 15 hours a month. In no way is that living high. In no way does that make it excusable for a husband to hide 50k of debt from her. Whether it was a bold-faced lie or a lie by omission is irrelevant. This may not have been malicious, but it does not make it okay. OP, ignore these clowns and go to a financial subreddit for some advice. The debt is not the end of the world. You will get through it. And one more comment from No Anti who says, ask him to show you what 100,000 bought. Walk around the house and yard, letting him point out what that money paid for. Ask him his plan for paying it back. Check the credit card statements. Is there any sign of a substance abuse or gambling problem? I've seen someone take cash advances on credit cards to pay for drugs before. I've seen someone abuse credit cards to the tune of $22,000 for drugs and hotel rooms for himself and his side piece. Check the bank records regarding the home equity loan. A 50,000 went somewhere. Good luck. Worst case scenario, bankruptcy is an option. So then OP left a comment update and then a full update after. So the comment on this one said, update. I'm going to post this here and I'll come back and respond individually later on. Maybe tomorrow. When I posted this, I had literally just learned about how bad it was. I spent the day going through everything and talking to my husband. He's cheating on me. The woman has two kids and I guess he's been helping her with them. They could be his for all I know. He's currently vomiting and crying in the bathroom. So that's effing great. I unfortunately have to stay married to him long enough to figure out the finances. I'm talking to a bankruptcy lawyer on Monday. Thank you everyone who made me feel a little less alone today. So then OP comes in with a full update which says, 47 days ago, I posted out about finding out my husband has been lying about our finances and that we are financially effed. That was just the tip of the iceberg as it turns out. After I spoke to him trying to figure out how this was possible, he admitted to having a second family. He's been cheating on me and has two kids with this lady. The best part, she's his second cousin and they've been in love since high school. What even is my life? The debt is worse than I initially thought. It's 100k in credit card debt and there could be more. Who knows at this point? I guess his cousin had a good job but lost it over COVID and that's when he started trying to pay bills for both households. I've hired a divorce lawyer who is going through everything so I can figure out a path forward. He's staying with his mistress cousin and his children. Are they also his cousins? And I guess finally living his dream. We've agreed it's best that our children don't stay there right now. All of the kids are having trouble adjusting, but the oldest is eight, so he has some understanding of what's going on. It's just gutting me. Luckily, we had a crap load of equity in our house as we bought it cheap and did a lot of labor of fixing it up ourselves. It's going to hurt me to no end to sell this house, but it should be enough to let us pay off most of what we need to pay off and go our separate ways. I started bartending again, which isn't exactly glamorous. It should get me and the kids through the next two years while I finish school. My ex-husband has so far said he would prefer the kids to live with me and he will pay me child support. I guess we'll see how that goes. My lawyer is also going to handle a custody agreement. If you had told me 48 days ago that this would be my future, I would have laughed. Some mornings I still wake up feeling like it's not real. I'm assuming at some point I will get very sad about this, but right now it's so ridiculous that I can't feel anything but a sick sort of humor. From the outside and even from the inside, we look like a boring, happy couple. You never know what's really happening behind closed doors, I guess. A lot of things finally make a lot of sense now. I thought he traveled for work one weekend a month. I've always thought it was weird, but it's always been that way, as long as I've known him. He doesn't travel for work. He spends that weekend with her. 
he gets a very generous amount of personal days and vacation, which he was always extremely reluctant to use. Except he wasn't reluctant to use them. He just used them all to spend time with her and their children. The work phone and work computer? Nope. Personal devices that he used to hide what was going on. I've started to feel bad for her in a way because she must have lived such an incomplete life all these years. And her children? I can't imagine. Anyway, I just wanted to post an update. So many of you were so wonderful that day I posted, which was one of the worst days of my life. One day, maybe I'll write a book after I've sorted out all the insane details. I'll update again if the plot thickens before then. Lol. And there was one more comment from OP who responded to Carrie who says, What the F? Where is the rest of the family in all this? Also, have you spoken to your divorce lawyer yet? I have to wonder if there's some sort of case for fraud against him somewhere. Also, depending on what state you're in, you could sue the cousin for alienation of affection. OP said, my lawyer said there is a lot to unravel, but that I will likely not be responsible for at least some of the debt. My husband's mother died when he was 14 and his father is an alcoholic, so we don't see much of him. He has one sister who lives across the country and I've only met a handful of times. He was close with his dad's brother, who is much older than his dad. The cousin he is involved with is that man's daughter's daughter. I think that's second cousin, yeah? Overall, their family isn't very close, except for the two of them, I guess. And although I was expecting something to happen, of course, you know, as I said at the start, cheating, gambling, or, or drugs, I wasn't expecting the cousin to come into it as well. Holy moly, OP, what an absolute time you were going through right now. And the rest of the comments on that update were pretty much, you know, legal advice about getting another lawyer and, and talking to them because they were saying that OP shouldn't be responsible for all those debts that he was sort of accumulating himself with his other family. I'm really not sure about any of that, especially with it being in the US as well. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's move on to another story. And this next story comes from Late at Dinner, who says, Am I the a-hole for telling my cousin she can't run off to do her own thing? When she was late to dinner on my bachelorette trip. Throw away. This kind of blew up into a bigger thing and my sister said I should post on Am I the A-hole? I'm 30 female, getting married soon and went to New York for my bachelorette trip recently. There were eight of us, including my cousin, Haley, 33 female, who was one of my bridesmaids. We were only there for a couple of days and there were a few different things we wanted to do. Also, I only asked people to pay for their flight and hotel share. I paid for everything else. I made early dinner reservations for everyone on our last night and we were going somewhere else after. Haley mentioned that day that she wanted to go visit a cemetery to pay her respects. Edit, it was to visit her late husband. I said okay, but to be back in time to go to dinner. I made the reservations for five and it was already 4.30, but Haley wasn't back at the hotel. A couple of us called, but she didn't pick up and she sent a text saying she was running late and she would meet us at the restaurant. She ended up coming close to six. I talked to her later about being so late and managing her time better. Haley made an excuse, but I replied that this was supposed to be a girl's trip, not so she can run off and do her own thing without thinking of anyone else. She got pretty upset and we flew back the next day, but she kept quiet. My sister said she saw her crying. I did text her later, but she left it on scene. My sister thinks I shouldn't have said that to her, but a couple of the other girls agree Haley shouldn't have been late. Am I the a-hole? And we'll start off in the comments with Coastal Kid 92 who says she was paying respects to her husband she was widowed from. Holy hell OP, absolutely you're the a-hole. I can understand that this was your bachelorette, but read the effing room. It wasn't like she went to go pay her respects to a dead celebrity buried nearby. It was literally her husband. Show a bit of compassion and grow the hell up. Diligent Activity says her own thing was visiting a cemetery to pay her respects, as in to someone she knew and cared enough about to visit their grave. You had to make it about you, having everything go your way. What the F is wrong with you? You're the a-hole. It is to add, I question if you're mature enough to get married since you have thought that one more dinner with you was more important than visiting her husband's grave. You are incredibly selfish to lecture someone who was visiting their deceased spouse because they were late. You had an entire trip focused on you and you couldn't have the grace to respect what she might be feeling and going through. You're the a-hole even more now. 
Helen says you're the a-hole. She paid for a flight and hotel. She has the right to do what she wants. I'd be more with you if she blew off most of the activities, but she was late to one dinner to visit a grave, presumably of someone she cares about. You should have let that go. Edit. Just saw your info that she was visiting her husband's grave. Come back to emphasize my original post. You're the biggest a-hole. I would never talk to you again if you did this to me. And one more comment from Overthinker who says you're the a-hole. She paid for her own flight and part of the hotel. She can go wherever she wants, whenever she wants. Just read why she was late. OP, you are awful. While you're busy celebrating a future marriage, she's mourning one. She was visiting her late husband and you were mad about it. So selfish. You should have told her to spend as much time as she wanted there. Reddit reminds me every day just how selfish and self-centered some people can be. And as always, whenever I read these stories, I, I try to put myself in the shoes of the people writing it or in other people's shoes as well at the same time. And I can honestly say if I was OP in this situation and a friend came up to me and said they wanted to visit, you know, their late partner's grave whilst we're in town doing whatever, whatever we were doing, I, I would absolutely be saying, you, you know, take as much time as you like. And if you need us at any point, just give us a shout. This is a loved one mourning their late husband and i understand you're there for a different reason this is important to them and like that comment said just have some bloody compassion speak to your cousin show some love show some compassion show them that they're family and hopefully they will forgive you for that but now i'm going to turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this situation maybe you have another take on the matter let me know your thoughts down in the comments below let's move on to another story and our next story comes from autumn 893 who says am i the a-hole for complaining after i asked to join my husband on his business trips my husband and i hadn't been spending much time together even though we've only been married for four months so i asked him if i could join him on his business trip it took some convincing because he thought i would be bored the whole time but he eventually agreed he was supposed to be in Berlin for a week, but it somehow turned into him going to five different countries in nine days. It was awful, and I was severely jet lagged the entire time, so I felt like crap. I don't know how he and everybody else was coping with the travel, but I told him I wanted to go home because I couldn't keep up with his schedule. After a lot of arguing, he did eventually slow the pace down, and we went home earlier than he would have liked, even though I told him I could go home by myself. During the argument, he said I shouldn't complain because I invited myself along and he was trying to get all of his work out of the way for me. He has to go on another trip in a few days and he told me I couldn't go because of what happened last time, even though I wasn't planning to ask. Was I the a-hole? Now this post sounds like it was written by one of my friend's wives a while back when I used to work for that market research company. And my particular friend used to travel all over the place. So he used to like manage the test. He would go to a location, people would turn up, they'd try like a food product or something, fill out a questionnaire or do an eye tracking test or something along those lines. And he would oversee it basically. And he would fix any problem that may come up. Like in some countries he would go to where electricity would get knocked out all the time. So he would have to source a generator and do all this kind of thing. And he's got some wild stories, let me tell you. But his schedule was absolutely brutal. I don't know how he actually did it. I mean, he was going from like China and to Africa and then New Zealand. And he was constantly all over the place with very little break in between. But I got to tell you, he absolutely loved it. And yeah, absolutely. He got to travel the world and see stuff. But I think you still, for the amount of days and traveling he did, you got to have a certain mindset for that kind of travel, I think. I don't think I could handle that myself. But yeah, I've gone off on one briefly there. His wife did the exact same thing, wanted to go on one of his work trips where he was traveling from A to B to C to D and she hated it. She wanted home by B. <laughs> but DKM says, oh my God, you can't honestly believe you're in the right in any way. One, you invite yourself on his business trip. Two, complain the whole time. Three, husband tries to accommodate. Four, you still complain. You're the a-hole, you're the a-hole, you're the a-hole mystic hayes says you're the a-hole dude is trying to work he told you that you wouldn't enjoy yourself but you just couldn't leave well enough alone and cost him and therefore yourself time and money 
Chippo the Woof says, you're the a-hole. It is a business trip. I understand you want to spend time with your new husband, but business trips are for work, not leisure. You probably made this all the more stressful for him, dealing with work, trying to finish everything up, and on top of it, you were complaining and wanted to go home. I wouldn't want you to go on my next business trip after seeing what happened the last time, fearful of that repeating itself. Mig says, you're the a-hole. You invited yourself along on his business trip, even though he told you he would be working, would have no time for you, and would hate it. He was working. A week in Berlin, turn into two weeks in a bunch of different countries is a thing that happens. Not all the time for sure, but it happens. You hated it. Then you did a bunch of complaining, which resulted in him doing less work in order to cater to you. What did you think work tricks were? Some kind of company-sponsored vacation? You thought he'd do a few hours light work, and then you'd get some sightseeing and hang out in nice hotels. Nobody's work trips are like that. Actually, my friend's was. <laughs> Slightly, of course. And let's have one more final comment from StrictBar4915, who says, You're the a-hole. I tag along with my husband to business trips and conferences a couple of times a year if he is going to be in a city I've wanted to visit. But I respect his schedule. I find ways to entertain myself by exploring the city and if he requests my presence at something like a dinner, I gladly oblige. He's my partner. I understand that travel is a part of his job and entertaining me is secondary. I'm happy when I get to see him on the trip, but I don't get in the way of his doing what he needs to do. And I certainly don't make demands to leave. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Maybe you live in a similar situation like this. You travel lots for work and you're away a lot of the time. How do you get on as a couple with this? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support and your time is always absolutely amazing. Please never ever forget that and hopefully i will see you in the next one take care and much love you bloody cheeky so and so <laughs>